Hey everybody, it's Rachel with Rachel Q Stitches and welcome to my channel. Today is Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022. And this is floss tube number 52. So everyone out there in internet land is calling this Tuesday because of all the twos involved. And um, anyway, just <laughs> I thought it was interesting. So if you are new here, welcome to my channel. This is a channel mostly about cross stitch. I do sometimes once in a blue moon talk about other crafty goodness, other stitchy goodness, but for the most part, I talk about cross stitch and today will be no different. If you are new here um, and you are not subscribed or if you're not new here and you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. I would greatly appreciate it. And for all 500 and four of y'all. I had to look at my list. 504 of y'all that are subscribed. Thank you so much. I reached 504 this week and I was over the moon excited. So thank you so much everyone for subscribing. So anyway, this, <laughs> I don't know what I'm about to say, but anyway, here I am. <laughs> um, like I said, this is a channel mostly about cross stitch. So I will get into my cross stitch and um, I will talk a little bit about things that I purchased over Christmas that I don't think I ever mentioned to y'all, but I want to show y'all a couple of things from there. And then I'll just touch just a teeny bit on house info. Anyway, so what have I been stitching on? The first thing I'm going to show you is a stitch along that I am hosting and it is the Erica Michaels ABC blocks. And this, um, is a stitch along that um, Shelly at Proverbs 3122 is joining with me. And um, we are stitching um, the Erica Michaels sampler bo blocks, I think they're called. I call them the ABC blocks, but I think they're technically sampler blocks. And essentially what they are is each block um, highlights a specialty stitch. And so I don't have my chart with me for this month, this go round, so I can't tell you what that specialty stitch is. I forgot to bring it with me. But um, no, it's right here. Never mind, I have it. <laughs> anyway, um, so what I'm doing is we are stitching them on the 1st and the 15th of every month. Um, we are on the letter P, and I am stitching it. And the P is, um, hold on. It stands for pineapple and periwinkle stitch. And so this is what I have done right here. I am stitching all of mine on 28 count, whatever. This is an even weave from Michaels. And um, I am using, um, they use a lot of specialty threads when these were released. And um, I'm just using floss that I've picked up at uh, flea markets and thrift stores and whatnot. So this is what I've done. So I just have um, a couple of peas left and the pineapple, which includes the periwinkle stitches. So that's right here. I am using the call for colors, but like I said, not the call for flosses. And um, for those of you that have been waiting to do it, I know a couple of y'all were waiting because Erica Michaels, um, the designer for Erica Michaels is re-releasing these patterns and um, she is releasing them with instructions. Um, right now they're free. Let me, let me backtrack a little bit. Right now they're free on the Rainbow Gallery website and I do have them linked below. But she will be re-releasing the patterns with the instructions and how to finish it in a book, which, which is originally what it was. I believe it might've been like a class handout or something. Um, I just found them um, looking up how to do specialty stitches and that just decided to do them. I don't think I'm going to make mine into a book, but I believe Shelly is going to. So um, I'm considering just buying the book because I've the new pattern, the new release, because I've enjoyed this so much. And um, I don't think I'll ever stitch them again, but uh, it depends on what new things the pattern has in it. I might just, I might just buy it. Just depends on how much it is. So anyway, that's my little rundown on the Erica Michael specialty blocks. I hope I made sense. I feel like I just kind of jumped right into all this and I'm kind of discombobulated, which is normal. <laughs> anyway, so that is my Erica Michaels block. So I'm having fun with these. I'm enjoying learning new stitches. Um, a lot of the blocks have a ton of the specialty stitches, which is good for learning how to do them. But I realized that I am not a huge of specialty stitches um i enjoy them 
you know, but I can't see doing a piece that has more than <laughs> three or four of each specialty stitch. You know, if there's something that says, oh, there's a couple of, you know, Algerian eyelets, I'll be like, yeah, I'll do them. But I, I think when we did Algerian eyelets, we did a bunch of them. So uh, <laughs> anyway, it's fun. It's it's stretching me. And um, the reason I started doing this, if you are new here, I'm going to kind of give you a little rundown. The reason I started doing this was because I came back into cross stitch after a 30 year um, break. And when I originally cross stitched back in the 90s, I was doing everything on linen. And when I came back, um, I picked up some things on Ada and realized how much I enjoyed it. And, you know, when you're young, you dive into crazy things. And like, like when I picked up cross stitch, I picked up, I think I did one project on Ada and then everything else was linen except for one other piece. And so, you know, the older, I'm just kind of a little bit more, eh, do I really want to do this? Can my eyes handle it? And they can, I can handle it. I enjoy it. In fact, um, several of the pieces I'm going to show you today are done on either linen or even weave. So anyway, so that's why I started doing this project just to kind of stretch me a little bit and it was free and, uh, they were cute. So anyway, on to the next project after my little if you've been here a while, you've heard all that. But anyway, anyhow, for those for uni people. So the next project I worked on is a piece that Stitch and Mommy, um, uh, I commissioned her to do for me. And this is called, um, she calls it the Picard Pew. I call it the Thibodeau Pew. My grandfather was a Thibodeau. My grandmother was a Picard. They were married in 1938. They um, went to the local Catholic church in the small town that they're, they're from. Um, they lived in, I should say, uh, was remodeling. They, um, you know, they purchased a pew, which then was carved with their name in order to help with the remodeling, I guess. Anyway, and it is, uh, we don't go to church there, but you know, of course, I, I don't think the church will hand me my pew. So I commissioned her to make this for me. And, um, anyway, this is what I've done. I did the maple leaf. I'm so excited. So um, last time you saw it, I have, so this is the whole thing. So last time you guys saw it, I had started working on the shield in the middle right here. And then um, when I picked it up, my goal was to finish the maple leaf right there. And if y'all can't figure it out, we are from Louisiana. Um, so this is, um, Hence the names pronounced probably incorrectly. But anyway, that's what I got done. And I, I know I say this every time, but when I'm doing it, I just don't see the shading. But whenever I see it in the camera, I see the shading of everything. So all I have left is the lion. And then the second half of the shield and then the bottom part of the shield. So that's it. Um, if I can get the um, second half of the shield, the shield's very, very, um, the coat of arms, I should call it the coat of arms because that's what it is, is very um, intricate. And I think it took me actually two, two days, two sit downs to do it. I'm not sure, I don't remember, but it was pretty intense. Just the color changes, but boy, they're pretty. Anyway, so that's my pew piece. Um, I refer to it as my family piece and it has given me the desire to um, do one for my dad's side of the family. So um, I have that piece picked out as soon as this one's finished. I will buy the pattern for that one and um, continue with that. And uh, at least those two families and then I want to do one for my parents. So anyway, that is that piece. And then I picked up um, yesterday city of romance um this is by stitch rovia um if you buy it on her etsy it is called city of love i got this out of i don't always look and it's never there a cross stitch magazine that i got on readly which i do have a link for readly down below if you want to try it it's got a ton of cross stitch and sewing and all kinds of magazines more than just that you know cooking and whatnot so that is city of romance and this is all of it right here. <laughs> and you can tell that I have gone, fold it up. 
So I'd started this tower and um, I got, you see yesterday, I picked it up yesterday. So I did all of this from here on up. And then there's not much left above that tower. You know, I still have this, this part right here of the tower to do. And then um, what I'm gonna try to do is just work my way straight up. I mean, I'll have enough, at first I was like, oh, well, I have enough fabric, but I think I have enough fabric. And um, anyway, I forgot to tell you what I did the others on. I'll backtrack and tell you those. But this is done on a 14 count Ada that I hand dyed with Dynaflow um, fabric paints. And that was a little tutorial I got off of um, Mama Loves You GB. So that's it. I love this piece. I still love it. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. Anyway, um, my family pew piece is done on a 28, 25 count chocolate um, Lugana, I believe, with called for DMCs. Um, the, um, well, the other ones I told you. This is done with anchor floss. I started this piece when Anchor first came out in Joanne's and Michael's. And the chart in the magazine is also charted using Anchor. So I went ahead and um, bought all the Anchor just to give it a try. And I have a couple of videos where I've reviewed the Anchor. Um, I am impressed with the floss. It's good floss. It's, you know, pretty comparable to DMC. But um, I still don't like the plastic spools. <laughs> so that is my only complaint with the Anchor on the spools. But other than that, it's good floss. Um, I do know that um, this tower right here actually calls for two different colors. And when you convert it to anchor, it turns out to be the same color. So I don't know in DMC if it would be more shaded. I just, instead of trying to switch colors, I just use the same color. All the other houses are pretty much um, just blocks of one color. So I didn't feel bad making this just one block of color and no shading. So, you know, that's the only thing is there really aren't, you know, to sit there and say it's a um, exact match. Probably not. Um, but, you know, I like the floss. It's good floss. So anyway. All right. I have a finish um, right here. I finished my Prairie Schooler Santa. And um, if you've been here, you know that I am doing all the stitching Santas. And so this is the first one I finished. I started in January. It has taken me a while. Um, I am not, um, I'm slow on this piece because I am using the Call for Davos fabric and the Call for DMCs, except for a con um, color conversion on his face. My daughter wanted him a little darker, so I, she got to choose. And so the next one, I am going to have my daughter-in-law choose and have her choose the color and, um, of the skin and then I'll get each of my kids to choose we have there are four stitching Santas and so I have four kids and so um, they'll each choose a skin color anyway um, it's using the Davos and I stitch using the <coughs> excuse me the sewing method and um, with Davos I can't do that it is an even weave so essentially it is a nine count even weave, but you stitch over one instead of over two. And my threads are constantly slipping under if I don't, if I try to use the stitching, the sewing method. But if I use the poke and stick and poke and stab, stick and poke, whatever, stick and pokes tattoos, right? Poke and stab. Anyway, if I try to use the <laughs> one, you know, up and down, up, then um, it doesn't slip. So it takes me longer. So I'm debating, do I want to continue using this? I have two pieces of it. This is a piece I got off a one, two, three stitch. And the other is a piece that I got um, at a thrift store. Do I want to continue with it? Or do I want to just get me an 18 count um, Ada and stitch it like I'm used to? I don't know. What would y'all do? It, it just took me forever. Uh, like I would get frustrated and just set it down and go to something else because it just, it, it bugged me. So anyway, I don't like the fabric. I should probably switch. I probably just answered myself, didn't I? <laughs> anyway, so this is my first Prairie Schooler Santa. Um, I hear that they are addicting, and maybe if I do stitch it on fabric that I enjoy, I might really like it. But boy, look at that back stitching, y'all. Okay, so here's a question for y'all. Back stitching. So right here is I just did one long stitch. To me, 
again, like, a, and even here, like you can kind of, you can kind of see the back stitching, but right here I did long stitches instead. And I think it pops out more. Um, these stitches kind of got lost between the reds. So what do y'all do for back stitching? Do y'all do one stitch at a time? Or if there's a long area, do you do one long stitch? Let me know. Let me know in the comments how you do that. Anyway, so this is him. This is my first Prairie Schooler Santa, and I am thrilled. Not sure how I'm going to finish them all, but um, I'm thinking about doing the flat fold method where they stick the glass head pins in the sides. Um, I haven't decided that either. So anyway, there you go. Yay, my first finish. <laughs> and um, I am participating in Colorado Cross Stitchers um, Winter Cross Stitch Camp. And our assignment for this camp was to do a piece all in one color. So I am doing what a lot of people have done is I am doing Stone Street Stitchworks Lace Makers Cottage. And what I do every morning, I wake up and after I do my study and everything, I do one length of thread in this and one length of thread in the next project. So this is my cottage. So I am working on the borders I'm trying to get all that done, and then I'll, um, I need to really get, get at it. Um, I missed a couple of days after when my son, um, and his fiance moved in. So, um, I need to really probably just spend a day and just, I think I said that last week. I'm just going to spend a day and finish it. I didn't. I spent a day on it, but I didn't finish it. But anyway, here it is. Uh, cute, cute little stitch. Um, makes me want to look up some more Stone Street stitch works projects and see if there's anything that I, I know there's probably something I want to stitch. Um, Stitching by the Shore, Laura stitched a cute little um, house in a, like a lantern. I think she did a lantern. Yeah. And um, really pretty. So this is it. I am using, this is a 30, I think it's a 30 count mystery linen that was my mom's that I inherited. And I am using silky um, threads. And I'm enjoying sulky threads. Um, I can't decide for my birthday if I want to ask for the whole set. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm enjoying using the sulky threads. I just use one strand. And um, it's going quick. Um, I like the way the sulky lays on this. Um, it lays really, really good. Um, covers well. And anyway, so that is that. And then the last thing I'm going to show y'all that I've stitched is my Blackbird Design Christmas stocking. This is in the, and I keep forgetting that book, y'all. I'm sorry. Home for the Holidays book, The Five Stockings. I am on, whoop, I'm not showing you that. I am on stocking two. I am doing this along with Kim, the Contented Stitcher, and Merritt Crawford, and a bunch of other people. And again, I am doing one strand a day and I probably need to, February is a short month, I probably need to um, pick up the pace and get some stuff done on this. Might start doing two strands a day. But anyway, so that's what I've gotten done. And I am also, this is a um, 32 count lamb's wool Joblin even weave. And again, I'm using the selkies for that. And I am using um, this variegated right here, right now. And then um, Mar um, Kim told me that I might want to use a different color, like for the window sashing and a couple other pieces to really make them stand out. So I'm going to use this. Anyway. Hey guys, Rachel here. I am editing my video and realized that I forgot to show y'all something. The most important piece. <laughs> So here I am, and uh, hopefully I can edit this correctly, and um, y'all can see this. Anyway, here it is. <laughs> Pandemic! Oh my goodness, I can't believe I forgot to show you guys. Okay, so here is... Pandemic. No, it's not finished. Don't worry. <laughs> but this is what I worked on this week. Um, I worked on my two days for my whip go stitching, and this is what I worked on. I got more of this big bouquet done. Um, 
<clears throat> if you're new here, this is done on 16 count Ada, white Ada from Michaels. And I am using a box of sampler flosses from the 1990s that my mom had bought for me. So when I run out of a color, I just pick another color that I think goes with it and I stick it in there. So this is what I've done. I've just have this big flower left, a couple of small flowers right here, and the big bouquet will be done. Hopefully by the time they call it again, the next time they call it, I will be able to finish it. So there it is. Hopefully I can get this stuck in the right place in my video and you guys can see it. Um, pandemic. Yay. And so that's it. That's all I've done in stitching this week. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about um, a purchase that I made. Before I do that, let me get a drink of water, y'all. Hang on a second. Okay. Um, I made a purchase after Christmas with some Christmas money that I had. And I bought the um, Gift of Stitching magazine download. They had all of them on sale. They're not on sale anymore and I feel bad because I don't think I told y'all, but um, they were on sale for I think $27 for all of them. And even even at the regular price of $39, it's not bad at all. And I bought it because um, Celeste Creates, Celeste had done um, one of the um, I think they have like several six part series throughout their magazines and she had done one um red work one can't think of, wait hold on it's right here um it is isabel anyway it's by reflet de soi anyway um so she had done that and um that kind of boosted me into buying the subscription um i kind of looked they, they have a chart that they um, you can download whether or not you buy the subscription. That kind of gives you a list of all the designers that they have in all their magazines and where it, what, what issue it's located in. And I found several that I was like, oh, you know, I've always wanted to try in ink circles. They had several ink circles. They had, um, I'm looking at my thing right here, the Reflet de Soi. They had the... Um, they have this right here. This is the Prairie School of Four Seasons right here. And um, so I bought him and I am enjoying them. So these are some things that I'm going to be working on in the next couple of months. Like as I finish up the pew and um, a couple of the other bigger pieces that I'm working on, I want to add in some new ones. So this is what I'm doing. Oh, here's another reason. They had a Chatelaine, y'all. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. Um, so that's, that's, this is one of the main reasons why I bought this was these patterns. So I was on Etsy the other day and I found this lady that, um, charted old Berlin wool work patterns and I fell in love with one and I loved it, but I haven't bought it, but you know, um, I really loved it. And yesterday or no it was a couple of days ago I was sitting down and I was just perusing through my magazines and I was looking for an ink circles piece and I saw that same piece that I love that I had favorited on Etsy and um apparently it was originally published in this magazine and this <clears throat> this is it right here isn't that beautiful I just think it's so pretty Anyway, so I just want to let y'all know that this is what I'm doing. And then I saved this ink circles right here. There you go. That's better. I need to not bring it up so close. Um, and then uh, right here, I thought this was pretty. I'm going to do this for one of my um, grandmothers. And then... Um, there's another ink circles right here. <clears throat> and, um, let me see. Then there's this one right here. <clears throat> this was my loving, my lovely sewing tools by Marie Suarez. And it is absolutely gorgeous. Now there's a ton of specialty stitches and a lot of these patterns use, um, like Vicki Clayton silks and stuff like that that I don't have. So I'm having to find um, <laughs> DMC substitutes because if you know me, I stitch mainly with DMC. So this is the My Lovely Sewing Tools 
um, isn't it pretty? I don't know if y'all can see it. I can kind of see it. Anyway, it's absolutely gorgeous. So pretty. So I'm going to start this one when I finish with the Erica Michaels box because, yeah, um, it's in six parts. But anyway, so if you're considering these, um, you know, they just have so much. That and along with Readly, you know, um, you can find something you like. And like I said, I wanted to try an Ink Circles and they had one in there. I wanted to try a Chatelaine. They had one in there. They have several, actually. They have some small ones. They have some big ones. Um, they have Prairie Schoolers. They have their ornament issues. Anyway, so it's really a neat um, magazine to get. And it's not a magazine. It's a neat download. And it was downloaded. I was going back and forth between that one and the Antique Sampler and Needlework Quarterly. But that's a DVD. And my computer doesn't have a DVD drive. <laughs> I know I can buy one, but then that's just an extra expense for one magazine. I wish it came in a download. It would be so much easier. Anyway, um, so one of my goals this year was to try a Chatelaine. And like I said, I downloaded um, in the magazine um, a small version. And then Chatelaine introduced one of their freebies. And they introduced a new freebie. And this is it right here. It's just a little part of the Marie Antoinette um, Rose Gate. So y'all, this is freebie on their website. I'm going to try to remember to link it down below. Um, if you want to try Chatelaine, <laughs> this might be it. So I think I'm going to do this. That way I can say, yes, well, yes, I have done a Chatelaine. It's small, but I have done one. <laughs> so I think that's what I'm going to end up doing is that one. Um, either that or the small one that I, I downloaded, um, that I got off the magazine and I didn't favorite it. So I can't show it to you guys. <clears throat> the one I showed you is a... A little bit bigger than I probably want to do. Anyway, so that is my little review of the Gift of Stitching magazine. It was so worth it. If you have a birthday or anniversary or something coming up, I think it'd be really, really worth it for you to get um, lots of lots of neat patterns. And anyway, so that's all for my stitching. That's all I have to say. I know I'm kind of going back and forth a little bit today. Um, I guess my kids are still here, so I tend to talk a little bit lower when there's other people in the house, and um, they're they're in the back, so they can't even hear me, but still, um, you know, they work, so I don't want to be too loud, you know, um, but anyway, so that's all I have for today in stitching. Not much family update. One little thing is that we have decided to possibly put our house on the market. We, um, we've been here four years. It is a house in the suburbs, and before that, we lived on a 20-acre farm. And we are just deciding that we like our space. <laughs> um, you know, uh, nothing against people, but my neighbor's kids run up and down my driveway and they terrorize my dogs. And um, mom thinks it's funny. Anyway, um, so it's just, you know, we're not neighborhood people. <laughs> So we're thinking about getting a piece of property and maybe something that we can subdivide for our children if they would want to put a house or something on it to live on. Um, and all three of the kids were excited about it. Um, and so uh, I think we're going to do that. We're going to, the market's hot in here. Um, my brother put his house in the market and he sold it over a weekend. So we're really kind of hoping we can do that sell it over the weekend and uh but of course since the market's hot it's finding something um with the house already on it that we can live in and that our son and fiance can live in with us until they decide to you know whatever they decide to do um they've decided not to move to houston uh <laughs> i'm excited about that <clears throat> that was originally the plan but i think they've just they like it here so that makes me happy so anyway, so that is our big news. Um, nothing else exciting happening. Um, I will be starting my application process to become a certified minister. Um, I'm almost done with all my classes. Um, so that's, um, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, that I'm nervous because I do have to, um, I can do written, written tests are hard. <laughs> Verbal tests. You know, when somebody asks me a question, I'm like, uh -uh. I know the answer. So I just don't test well and I'm terrible under pressure. So anyway, 
So that's what I've done this week. Thank y'all so much for joining me and for the 504 people that are subscribed. Thank y'all so much for subscribing. Um, if you're not subscribed, again, please consider doing so. Like, share, um, hit the little notification bell, all the things that help our channel grow and get out the wonderful word that cross stitch is a relaxing hobby because it is. It keeps me focused on... Um, good thoughts in my head um, and it allows me to process what I've studied in the morning um, but still do something with my hands and doesn't require too much thought unless I'm working on pandemic <laughs> then I have to really think hard but <clears throat> other than that it's very relaxing and we want to get the word out that it is not just for grandmas because I'm not a grandma yet so um, anyway Thank y'all so much. I will see you guys next week. Lord willing and the creek don't rise. Bye. God bless y'all.